across the line. Any disrespect of football or members, staff, USFL, hotel, etc., would not be tolerated. I didn't think I did anything or said anything disrespectful. I read a lot of my comments, not too many because some of them could get toxic, but for the most part, when a large majority of you guys went on to my USFL rules versus NFL rules video and requested for more USFL content, I'm not going to ignore my audience. So the USFL debuted this past weekend and boy did we get a show. Everything from first person views of dirty hits to drone cameras to Jason Garrett interviewing Jeff Fisher and Todd Haley and actually asking them how to build build a winning culture. No, that actually happened. All the way to a player losing his job over a slice of pizza, which I cannot wait to break down for you guys. In this video, we're going to go over everything you've missed in weekend one of the USFL. Now, before we get to the content, we're giving away $250 to two of my followers on Twitter. All you have to do is follow me on Twitter at microphone NFL. And if you want, turn on my notifications. Now that we get all that out of the way, break. Mic check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? The USFL opened up with some fantastic football. Luis Perez, a star of the AAF, opened the USFL season with a 49 yard pass to Randy Satterfield. Something that stuck out to us almost immediately is the fact that the game featured some unique camera angles. There were drone cameras flying all over the field to give players an alternative view of the game. I feel like this was really cool on kickoffs and alternative camera angles were a huge theme of the USFL's opening weekend. My absolute absolute favorite was the helmet camera because I don't think we've seen anything like this in actual football games. I mean, seeing a pick six from a first person view brought me back to when I was playing ESPN NFL 2K5 as a 12 year old. Speaking of which, we're going to start doing gaming on twitch.tv forward slash TF microphone. If you guys want to check it out, a link to that's in the description down below. We also had an opportunity to see a dirty blindside hit from a first person view. This adds a brand new element to enjoying the USFL and shortly after we saw former Seattle Seahawks QB Alex Magoo throwing a beautiful bomb of a touchdown to Osiris Mitchell, you can make the argument that the USFL was going to be a very entertaining spring football league. Although the real entertainment would come off of the football field and we'll get to that in just a sec. The best game of the weekend was played between the New Jersey Generals and the Birmingham Stallions, which featured a beautiful touchdown pass from Luis Perez to Braden Bowman with nine minutes and 10 seconds left in the second quarter and a laser from Jamar Smith to his tight end with five minutes and 56 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Jamar Smith would score the game winning touchdown to cap off Birmingham's 28 to 24 victory. And I love this game primarily because high quality football was played by both sides. My only critique is the fact that Birmingham has an unfair home field advantage throughout the entirety of the season because all the games are being played in Birmingham, but that's to cut costs during the inaugural season. And when you're a spring football league, you need to do whatever it takes to cut costs because starting a spring football league is a huge, huge, huge net negative. It's very difficult to be profitable in spring football. No other organization has been able to do it historically. That's why I have a ton of respect for the individuals that are trying to make it work. Now, the second game of the weekend had a little more drama and lower quality football with all due respect. The Michigan Panthers had the number one pick in the USFL draft. And with that pick, they selected Shea Patterson, who was three years removed from being the Michigan Wolverines quarterback. And to be honest, Honest, apart from a red zone fumble returned for a touchdown, Patterson didn't look too shabby under center. Paxton Lynch would take over the next season for Patterson. And honestly, this is where I got a bit of a reality check about what the stakes were for each and every player in the USFL. Because the backstory of Paxton Lynch was he was a first round pick in the 2016 NFL draft. The Dallas Cowboys were very interested in him and even admitted that they would have selected him if he was available in the second round. Fortunately for the Cowboys, he was selected by the Denver Broncos and the Dallas Cowboys ended up settling for a guy named Dak Prescott later on in the draft. Now Paxton Lynch was drafted as a project QB who was never really able to use his height to his advantage and has been out of the NFL since 2020. So the USFL might have been his last ditch attempt to either play football professionally or maybe hopefully make it to the NFL. I mean this isn't necessarily the case for every player that plays spring football but there is a path to the NFL if you dominate 
played in these leagues. Just look at what happened with PJ Walker. He was the MVP of the XFL in 2022. And then due to some good luck with the fact that the Carolina Panthers needed quarterback depth and his old coach that coached him when he was in Temple, Matt Rule was the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. He got signed by the Panthers and even started in a few games. But for Paxton Lynch, things didn't go as smoothly in his first game because on his very third play, he would fumble the football. And then later on in the game, you would get intercepted on a 10 yard pass that I think absolutely ruined any hope for this man playing football professionally. I mean, the problem with this interception was not only was it a horrific read and not only did Paxton Lynch have horrific QB mechanics, but the man barely had the arm strength to throw a 10 yard pass. I mean, this pass reminded me of a 2021 Drew Brees that could barely throw the football 10 yards. I think at this point, if you're Paxton Lynch, you got to consider packing it in and maybe transitioning into coaching. Now, this brings me to the most important part of the video. And I think it's the fact that the success of the USFL is 100% dependent on their execution of being able to do this. And it's the fact that they need to instill a sense of drama in their product. Now, the NFL is a star driven league. Yes, you're watching incredible highlights by Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Antonio Brown, and Tom Brady. But the storylines are a huge component of what fires us up. From Jackson Mahomes irritating all of us and dancing on the sidelines, to Aaron Rodgers being cryptic about his future, to Antonio Brown being, well, Antonio Brown, to Tom Brady mulling his retirement and coming back, it is not a stretch to say that the fans care about these players. Fans care about the drama of the NFL. When Tom Brady returned to Foxborough as a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, we were all glued to our TVs last year. The USFL needs to find a means of doing that, and it's especially challenging when you consider the fact that the USFL doesn't have the stars that the NFL has. I originally thought it would be an awesome idea to follow the players with cameras in a hard knocks type of fashion. I mean, Formula One was able to generate a ton of interest with their show on Netflix, and the USFL can generate a lot of interest if we understood some of the storylines behind these players. And a great indicator of that was what happened with a slice of pizza and Devion Smith. Now, I I wanted to shout out Shooter Bob for tagging me in this on Instagram and bringing it to my attention yesterday. I would have made a video on it yesterday, but I'm trying to take days off because, well, people have been telling me to take more days off. And to give you a backstory of this, Devion Smith was the running back for the Michigan Wolverines during the mid 2010s, but is mainly known for being the XFL's leading rusher in 2020. So this is a guy that at the very least does deserve a spot in this league. Smith would get drafted by the Pittsburgh Mall and was set to debut on Monday until one very interesting interaction where he quote unquote crossed the line. Well, he crossed the line. So we had to deal with it. Based off of the way the head coach is saying this, you would think Devion Smith did something despicable. Like I'm used to seeing some crazy shit as an NFL commentator, like Earl Thomas fighting Chuck Clark, Antonio Brown forging vaccine cards, Aaron Rodgers bringing out his toe in the middle of an interview. But I think this takes the cake. Any disrespect to football or members, staff, USFL, hotel, etc., would not be tolerated. So the coach says very seriously that and no disrespect be tolerated. So the head coach cuts Devy on Smith and we have absolutely no idea why. Now, what's crazy about this is when Devy on Smith begins to talk, he mentions that there was a conflict, but he was respectful about it. That's so all I said, I didn't say no cuss word, nothing. But here's where things get absolutely insane when we find out what the conflict was about. I was like, he said, is that gonna be a problem? I said, yes, I don't eat chicken salad. And I was like, is there another option? Walked in with pizza, and I was like, can I get a slice of pizza? He said, no. So he says, yes, I don't eat chicken salad. So the man wanted pizza over chicken salad, which look, man, I get it if you want your players to eat healthy. And I've never heard of any healthy diet containing pizza, but maybe the man wanted to carb load before a workout. Maybe the man just hates salad, but the head coach doesn't seem like he wants to hear it. And I appreciate you sharing that, but the matter is it's done. It's done. I appreciate you doing sharing that. So he said that the release is done, which is wild. The coach sounded like he just cut his star player for a noble cause too. Someone's feelings hurt feelings or a distant second to the greater good of the team. 
and we've moved on and turned that page and I'm happy we did it. Now, I actually reached out to Devion for an interview on Twitter. He tweeted wild and I asked him, yo, any chance I can interview you for my YouTube channel? Did you really get cut for wanting pizza? If you guys want to go like it up, maybe he'll see it. I'm sure he saw it, but hell, if we could juice up the Twitter, we could probably get some really cool content in the future. Now, ever since then, Devion Smith has been kind of going on a Twitter tirade. He said in all caps that I said nothing disrespectful or did anything disrespectful. I even got my teammates that was right there. So I originally thought this was scripted, but Devion's reaction is actually indicating the opposite. Now, since then, we actually have a statement from the Pittsburgh Maulers on Devion Smith getting cut from the team on United by Football. So check this out. First of all, really interesting font, but this is what it has to say. On the first episode of United by Football, the weekly USFL All Access docuseries on Fox, Devion Smith was shown on camera being cut from our team by coach Kirby Wilson. The show captures hundreds of hours of film with the intent of providing transparency to fans. But unfortunately, much of the context was left out in this moment. Smith had violated three team rules in a 24 hour span, and in this particular incident, disrespected a cafeteria worker which wasn't captured on camera. Smith was subsequently reached out directly to Coach Wilson to apologize and asked to be reinstated to the Maulers roster. Now, I feel like it's very suspect that on one hand, they're claiming that there was hundreds of hours of film that was captured with the intent of providing transparency to fans, yet this one instant wasn't captured on camera or none of the violations were captured on camera. And as a matter of fact, Devion Smith says exactly this. He quoted this saying, what rules did I break? Why are you lying on my name? Say less. So he actually is referring to the three team rules that the statement claims that he is breaking and then double down on this saying, they really just put out a lie. Y'all really should be ashamed of yourselves. Then he tweeted out, see now you guys are playing with my character and who I am as a man. Show me three team rules that I broke, please. Now, here's the interesting thing because the statement is a little sus saying that he broke three team rules, but didn't really provide any evidence of such. Devian Smith apparently has receipts about this entire incident saying, now, if I send these screenshots from our exact convo, who's the one lying? And then would say, I was never made aware that I violated any team rules, let alone three in a 24 hour span. I never disrespected anyone. Coach Kirby and I spoke after being released. In that talk, he said that he'd certainly vouch for my character. So it seems like there might be a route for Devion Smith to return to the team because he's really making a big deal out of this because he feels like he was wrong. I don't know, which side are you on here? Do you think that Devion Smith is telling the truth or are you on the side of the Pittsburgh Maulers? Personally, I think after the statement came out, the Pittsburgh Maulers are looking very, very sus. I mean, why would you say you have hundreds of hours of film with the intent of providing transparency to fans, but oh, we don't have that one particular moment that resulted in us releasing Devion Smith. If he had violated three team rules and you want to provide transparency to the fans, don't you think that you should film a coach getting the information that Devion Smith was breaking team rules? I mean, I've seen a lot of Hard Knocks episodes, man. And if you remember a couple years ago with Corey Coleman and the Cleveland Browns, there was a coach that came up to Hugh Jackson and said that Corey Coleman wasn't very happy with the fact that he wasn't getting much playing time. As a result, cameras focused on Corey Coleman a little bit more as the entire thing went down. And I feel like in this instance, if you're going to cut a player and say that we have footage to back it up, but we don't have this bit of footage, it's a little suspect. I'm sure if this is the reason why Devion got released, then maybe another team is bound to pick him up. But I feel like there's more to this story that we're not really getting. I mean, the head coach looks goofy as hell trying to make it seem like this move was made for the good of the team. And honestly, if he just cut a player just for asking a hotel employee for pizza instead of salad, that is absolutely ridiculous. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all this. I think the first weekend of the USFL was a dub. I can't wait to see how this progresses moving forward. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys want more USFL reviews like this. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.